Welcome back. The American state of Tennessee has a number of claims to fame, including American country music and being the birthplace of rock and roll, so they say. It's also home to the high-stepping Tennessee walking horse. This tradition of prancing horses stretches back decades but is now being challenged by animal activists, including none other than Priscilla Presley, despite Elvis's fondness for the sport. Here's Mary Ann Jolly, and a warning, some viewers may find parts of this story disturbing. Perhaps it's not surprising that one of Tennessee's favourite sons loved walking horses. This rare home video from the 60s shows Elvis Presley riding his first Tennessee walking horse. And Elvis got a horse called Bear, who was a beautiful black Tennessee walking horse. That's my first introduction. And he would ride him up and down uh, the lawns of Graceland. He's proud of that horse. Beautiful ride. Priscilla Presley and Elvis had about a dozen walking horses. They are probably one of the most beautiful, beautiful, magnificent creatures. Their body, their stature, the way they hold themselves, their pride. The Tennessee walking horse has a natural gait, a beautiful natural gait. For some reason, as a society, we want bigger, we, mo we want more. You know, if they can do it that high in their natural gait, why not get them to do more? Young riders in class 23. You can learn under and this is not the natural gait of the walking horse. Here in Shelbyville, the capital of the Tennessee walking horse industry, it's what they call the big lick. And it's what wins at shows like this. I do think this horse is not artificial like it's made out to be. I think it is a real equine athlete. But, you know, we are a competition. And, you know, there's going to be a few folks that try to cut corners. Winky Groover is a second generation trainer with more than 40 years experience in the performance horse business. Today he's getting ready for the first show of the 2014 season. Alright, this is Brain Power. He is the reigning reserve world champion three-year-old amateur stallion. And we're going to show Brain Power tomor tomorrow night at the horse show. The walking horse has a natural high stepping gait, but the exaggerated big lick is only achieved with the aid of what trainers call action devices. The most obvious, the ungainly shoes on the horse's front feet. This is what's called a foot pad. This is nailed directly to the horse's foot, just like a horseshoe on any other breed of horse. And this is nailed directly to the bottom. A so-called package made of plastic is nailed to the foot pad. This is the it's kept in place uh, by a metal the, band over the, the hoof. Package. Trainers sometimes add weights to the horse's front legs, either chains around the ankles or a plate of lead in the foot pads. And what does the weight do? The weight just helps them to actually lift their legs hard. After a couple of laps of the exercise barn, legs are wrapped, whiskers are trimmed, and tails are blow dried. Then it's time to load the trailer and head to the show. Shelbyville is an hour west of Nashville, the capital of Tennessee. It's surrounded by horse stables and studs, and iconic silhouettes of rearing horses are everywhere in the town. Each year, Shelbyville hosts the biggest walking horse show of the year, the National Celebration. It's a national celebration that we have in August, and that's responsible for over $40 million in economic impact for the county in the 10 days it's there. It's a 75-year tradition that is very important uh, not only to this area, but to the families, and it's multi-generational, and it's important to agriculture and farming. Mike Inman is the CEO of the National Celebration and was once an owner of Champion Walking Horses. 
Are we having a good night? Tonight he's keen to promote the annual trainer show and to explain what the judges look for. As you start to judge him, you want to see, again, the length of stride, the length of reach, the amount of head shake, and is the horse balanced? The level of performance will vary from horse to horse in small degrees, and that's what the judging is made of. Not only are Big Lick shows struggling for spectators these days, the industry is under fire from animal welfare campaigners. You know, there are a lot of abuses in the horse world, uh, a lot of equine welfare problems, but this is one that is so widespread and so egregious that the Humane Society felt that it was a campaign that we needed to take on. Down this gravel road, caught on tape in this barn, Undercover video, being seen for the first time tonight. Jackie McConnell, seen here beating a horse. In 2012, an American television network broadcast images of shocking cruelty by a prominent trainer of Tennessee walking horses, Jackie McConnell. The video shows the process of soaring, where caustic substances like mustard oil are put on the horse's legs and the legs are then wrapped so the skin burns and festers. Later Jackie McConnell and his stable hands are seen putting heavy metal chains around the open sores, all with the intention of making the horse react in pain and lift its legs higher. The horses on the video appear to be in such great pain, they often refuse to get up and are whipped by the stable hands. We had an employee that was hired by Jackie McConnell to work in his barn, and she worked there for a period of about two to three months, and uh, was able to see firsthand a lot of the things that we knew were going on and have been going on for a very long time. That is their business model, to embed themselves in agriculture, however long it takes, see something that, that's not right, and then paint the entire industry with that brush. Back at the Shelbyville show, trainers are feeling the heat. Checking the sensitivity on the back of this horse. At most shows, horse inspections are left to the industry to oversee. But tonight, the United States Department of Agriculture, or USDA, has arrived in force to ensure competitors are not in violation of the 1970 Horse Protection Act. The inspectors are looking for signs of scarring or sensitivity on the horse's pasterns. Winky Groover finds one of his champion horses is a centre of USDA attention, and after tense consultation, he's told it won't be competing tonight. What's happening now is we're having some veterinarians check him to see what they think, and they disagree, but that's where we're running into a subjective inspection. One man has say-so of putting you out, and he put him out, and he put him out for the whole show. And you know, that horse is obviously not a sore horse, not an abused animal, and you know, here we go again. I'm travelling to Brentwood in Tennessee, a short distance from Shelbyville. I'm on my way to a conference to promote humane practices in the walking horse industry. With me is Marty Irby, an eight-time world champion and former president of the Breeders and Exhibitors Association. His opposition to soaring and abuse has earned him some serious enemies. I've had death threats, uh, threats for physical harm that were even public threats and people who just would do anything to hurt someone who stands up against their way of life. So what are we going to see here today? You'll see some exhibitions of the sound horses who aren't soared and the future of what the breed can be and how it will grow and horses that are trained in a proper manner with natural horsemanship. No one here wants to see the end of walking horse shows, but they do want to see the cruelty of soaring finally stamped out. The trouble is, it's been going on for a long time. My father taught me how to soar a Tennessee walking horse when I was about 13 years old. 
I really didn't know what was wrong. It's just something that, you know, was a way of life in the culture and um, had no idea that that was something, it was just something you were taught to do and that's the way things were and everybody did it. Winky Groover is prepared to admit he sawed horses, but a long time ago. Have you ever used chemicals on a horse's legs? Not in any recent years. But you did in the past? Yeah, 35 years ago. What sorts of things did you use on them? Just some kerosene or something, diesel. During his long career, Winky Groover has been cited 26 times for violation of the Horse Protection Act. The alleged offences include for sores, scars, the use of foreign substances and illegal chains. The back part is allowed some hair loss. The day after he was cited at the trainer's show for a scar on his horse, he was adamant he'd done nothing wrong and that he was unfairly disqualified. But as you can see, this horse is free from really any blemishes of any kind. If you rub your hand across his foot, it's smooth. He's got hair in. You know, I don't think he's out. These images are from the show that you attended. Tracy Turner is a veterinarian and expert consultant to the USDA and was on duty at the trainer's show. To help them find the evidence of soaring. His specialty is thermography, which monitors variations in temperature on the horse's legs. Hot areas can be an indication of an injury or soaring. So the left foot here had, this was found to be scars, and you can see here in the pocket where it's warm, it's really hot in two lines. I mean, they're, they're off scale again. Tracy Turner is in no doubt that Winky Groover's horse was properly disqualified. It's just saying that they found scars. And scars are evidence of past soaring. Doesn't mean it was soared yesterday, uh, doesn't even say who it does, but a horse can't be presented that has had evidence of soaring. One thing that can't be disputed is that the abusive practice of soaring that began in the 60s still goes on today. And according to Marty Irby, who until recently was a leader in the Big Lick fraternity, the claim it's not widespread is simply not true. I say that's a fallacy. I think if you don't cheat, you can't compete today. The majority of the people that I have ever seen in the padded, the big lick segment of the walking horse industry soar their horses and the horses that, per, that are doing that gate, that big lick gate, have either been soared at one time to learn that gate or are currently being soared. And it's very rampant. Jackie McConnell, the trainer exposed in this video, had no shortage of clients who wanted him to work with their horses. When the video was recorded, he was serving a five-year federal disqualification, but he continued to train horses and attend major events without a hint of shame. I was absolutely shocked at what I saw on the Nightline video. I think Jackie was one that was trying to take shortcuts and, you know, got caught and, thank goodness, got punished and is out. He was banned from shows, but he was still showing horses. How did the industry let him do that? You know, I don't know why or how. I really think all of us were shocked that that's what really was going on at Jackie's. If Jackie, had, Jackie McConnell had to do all of those things to those horses in order to get them to do that look, how are other trainers doing it without soaring? Priscilla Presley says that back in the 60s, she and Elvis were unaware of the widespread practice of soaring. So she was happy to enter one of Elvis's horses in the national celebration. We were very naive. We had no idea uh, to the extent of what the horses go through, actually, to have that big lick, they call it. No, we did not have any idea. Very naive, just thought they were beautiful, thought they were natural, uh, high-stepping horses. These days, Priscilla Presley is campaigning in Washington alongside major American veterinarian organizations. They're calling for new legislation that they hope will put an end to soaring once and for all. Priscilla has also withdrawn a trophy given in Elvis's honor to prize-winning horses at the celebration. 
there's no justification whatsoever for her to put any animal through this process of torment, pain, and abusiveness. And people who justify it, I have to look at really where they come from and who they are. To ju be able to justify a horse going through this for a, a ribbon or a trophy or for pay? If you're not for it, then you're against it. And if you're against the big it, lick you're industry is now in crisis mode, desperately lobbying against the proposed legislation that will outlaw the use of pads and chains and give the Department of Agriculture sole responsibility for inspections at shows. So Their belief is that the banning of action devices will spell the end of the big lick horse. Essentially they want the entire breed eliminated again saying that will eliminate soaring. Well, certainly it will if you eliminate the horse, there won't be any horse left. Uh, we have programs to reward and encourage people who will use their Tennessee walking horses in humane, respectful ways and help promote the breed to the rest of the world. So if we were against having people having horses and using their horses, we wouldn't be offering rewards and recognition to people who are doing that humanely. You don't need to be an expert to see the fine qualities of the Tennessee walking horse. Without the use of artificial devices, the animal has a grace and beauty matched only by its gentle temperament. For many lovers of the breed, the time has come to leave well enough alone. People just need to evolve in a new direction to understand that soaring is wrong. So once they really have a change of heart and come to understand that the walking horse can grow in a new direction away from the sore big lick horse and the pain-based gait that exists, they will see what the, the, the walking horse could actually be the largest equine breed on earth.